Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Jason Mackey's First 10, a quick hit podcast to get you ready for the day. Today's episode will feature a lot of pirates and some Steelers talk. In fact, I want to debut something here. I'm going to be calling a verbal column. I'll try it a little bit. It was something my wife actually came up with. I thought it was a really good name, so I'm going to steal it. Basically, a way to get my point across. Something I otherwise would have written. My first uh, inclination in those situations is usually to write things down, but have this outlet. So we're going to take advantage and see how it goes. First thing I want to remind you, though, is that we're sponsored by the North Shore Tavern. You don't have to be a baseball fan to love it there. The interior is wall-to-wall pirates. There are appetizers, entrees, cocktails, and, of course, steak and seafood on a sizzling lava stone open every day. The North Shore Tavern across from PNC Park is Pittsburgh's home for steak on a stone. So I know the NFL schedule came out, but I want to talk about Pirates because I think there's something that actually relates back to a trip that I took uh, in the late offseason to the Dominican Republic, and that's where we picked this one up. Uh, The last time Bob Nutting spoke to media, anybody in person, I know he provided a statement to The Athletic, it was me. I was at their Dominican Republic Academy. I was me and Jake Krause from MLB.com. Um, I was asking Bob about his expectations for 2024 and what he would consider a success. Um, I know that interview kind of irritated some people, but I want to read Bob's quote because I think it's pertinent now. Very enthusiastic to see another step forward, Nutting said. I'm not going to pick a number of games or wins, but for the first time in what feels like a decade, and maybe on the calendar is six or seven years, we're within striking distance of a good team. We're short of that still, but the progression is clearly going in the right direction. My expectation is that we take another meaningful step forward in 2024. With the current playoff system, another step forward means we can be in contention throughout the season. That's a minimum expectation we should have and one we should be building on. Well, it's not reality right now. This is not a contending team. This is a flawed and occasionally very bad team with an offense that is worrisome, with a system that isn't really leading to success with young players and guys who have been here for a little while, guys they should be reaching. We're talking 30% of the way through the season. The Pirates are on pace for 70 wins. That's not a step forward. That's a step back by a half dozen games. And we haven't heard from Bob. I don't expect to hear from Bob. But I can't imagine that this is going over well. And I understand the idea of sample size. I think that's something, even myself, I didn't fully grasp about baseball until I started covering it, just how long the season is. And a lot of people externally want to get really mad about what the Pirates do or don't do. And I never want to invalidate those concerns. But there is the reality of sample size. And in this situation, I'm not defending the Pirates. I'm just presenting kind of both ways of looking at this. Before 40 games, I'm probably going to, favor the sample size and say like it's just not enough we need to see more data we're 44 games in um and i'm not sure we're seeing any signs of it getting better in fact i know we're not seeing any signs of getting better there are some numbers i'm going to get to eventually that since a nine and two start it's been really really bad um furthermore it's not just this season like if you look at their offense and some of their foibles it dates back a long ways um uh, it, it, <laughs> Since the start of 2022, I went back and looked this up. Runs, the Pirates are 27th. OPS, they're 28th. Strikeouts, they have the fourth most in Major League Baseball. What are we clinging to at this point? Furthermore, look at some of the young players that the Pirates have had, guys we've been told are prospects with potential. I'm going to read off a list of names. You don't need to absorb every single one of them. But I challenge you to find one player on this list who has legitimately gotten better or has done so to contribute to this team. Davis, Triolo, Pagaro, Sawinski, Smith and Jigba, Contreras, Priester, Bay, Castro, Marcano, Rodriguez, Mitchell, Tucker, Newman, Ortiz, Swaggerty. Most of them aren't even with the organization. And these are guys that the Pirates theoretically revamped their development program for, and we're supposed to reach. They need to reach. It's not optional. They have to help these guys get better. I and others wrote a whole bunch about how the Pirates were going to do this differently. I don't know if they have. I really don't. And I go back to something that Ben Charrington said, even Travis Williams, Bob Nutting, when they did the total regime change. We kept hearing about player-centric culture. We're going to reach players, individual plans, tailor things to them. They basically whitewashed what the former group did 
And they took things like, you know, using throwing a whole bunch of sinkers and, and trying to execute a plan that was like boilerplate, right? And they used it in a way to pivot in another direction. Well, what do you know? A couple of years later, what is this group doing now? They're kind of doing the same thing, not necessarily with sinkers. They want best stuff in zone. And I don't even have a problem with the pitching program, by the way, but, you know, they're going to latch on to whatever a guy's best pitch is and run that basically into the ground, throw it in the zone a lot. The bigger problem to me is the offensive approach. They're cookie cuttering the heck out of this thing. Not every major league baseball player is set out to work deep in counts, is set out to have his aggressiveness sort of dulled or diluted at the plate. Some guys are naturally aggressive hitters. I know this isn't a comparison that's necessarily apt to the Pirates, but I even think about a guy like Vladimir Guerrero. And Vladimir Guerrero, the old man, not even the young one. Like, that dude wasn't waiting around. He wasn't necessarily looking to be patient and get deep in counts. He's an aggressive hitter. You don't want to take the bat out of his hands. You don't want to change what kind of player he is. But the Pirates are doing that. And that's not a player-centric culture. That's not what they said they were getting into. That's not what all of us were sold. And the results are bearing that out. It's, it's, I, I know it's frustrating for you guys. It has to be. Um, and you can look at that sample size. You can even look at they started 9-2, and two, right? Well, since then, they've been terrible, right? Last in runs with 97. Last in batting average, 204. Last in OPS, 604. The record, I believe, 10-23. and 23. That's not going to work at all. Um, they're preaching patience since May 5th. Ben Charrington was on his radio show talking about how we have to let the process play out. Okay, great. Well, I think it's been 10 games since then. The Pirates have not been discernibly better. Batting average tied for 26th at 222. OPS 17th at 692. Runs a little bit better with runs, 42 runs. They're 16th. Okay, well, it's offset by the pitching, which has come unwound during that time. 536 ERA, the fourth highest. 17 home runs allowed most in Major League Baseball. So, yeah, you can be patient. I don't think you can be asking that of their fans anymore. Fans want to see a winner. They deserve to see a winner. It's been long enough. I don't think they want to hear any more about plans. And the owner shouldn't want to hear any more about plans. If I'm Bob Nutting, I'm asking these questions. Why don't I have more offense? Why am I not winning more games? I invested $17-plus plus million to change regimes. I heard about a player-centric culture. I heard this plan offensive plan was going to lead to me scoring more runs. We're not scoring more runs. Why are we not scoring more runs? Bottom line, there are some serious questions that need to be asked. I, I hope they've been asked, frankly. I mean, this isn't the occasion to start. Um, and again, I, given what Bob said at the beginning of the season and how that measures across what the Pirates have done thus far, I, I don't understand how it gets a passing grade. And I don't understand how you keep going down this road, especially with the pitching they've got. That's the rotten part. You have a rotation that can be darn good. You have a rotation that a lot of people across the entire sport are starting to really notice and care about. Jared Jones, Paul Skeens, Mitch Keller's been outstanding. Bailey Falter, me and a lot of others were wrong about. He's been just fine. Even Martin Perez, I know he was not good in the series finale against the Brewers, but I'm still, I'm still okay with it. I am. I don't like the six-man rotation. I'm glad they've gone the other way. Check out Andrew Destin and Noah Hiles' podcast to hear about that. Mine's more of like a bigger picture, overarching direction of the team. What the heck are we doing here? And I hope somebody's asking those questions because it's just not good enough. It's not good enough for the time, for where we're at in the calendar, for the results, for what we're sold. No, just not working. Second thing I wanted to hit on, the NFL schedule was released tonight. Um some shockers for the Steelers. Um, we and the rest of the media core is going to be busy on Christmas Day, which is fun. I'm looking forward to that when they host the Chiefs. Um, you can get the nuts and bolts of that. Uh, Ray Fittipato and Adam Bittner did a video, but I wanted to chime in with a couple to, couple of my uh, thoughts and my two cents on this thing. The lead up to that game against the Chiefs on Christmas Day is absolutely insane. I can't believe that the NFL is doing this. Oh, wait. Yes, I can, because it can make them money. They can put a game on a Wednesday. They can put a game on a Wednesday with a team that's a national draw on the Steelers and also the Chiefs, and look at what you're doing to the Steelers during that time. This isn't a, you know, local media guy stumping for the Steelers. I, I guess it is, but I mean, it's it's silliness to me. It really is. December fifteenth, they play at Philly. 
Then they play, I think it's what, December 21st. I'm going off memory on this one at Baltimore and then against Kansas City on the 25th at home. You've got three games in basically 10 days. Two of them have traveled. You look at those teams right now, power rankings wise, they're all top five teams. Player safety, anyone? Anyone? We worry about guys getting hurt playing games in quick succession. I guess that doesn't apply here because it's Christmas, right? Doesn't matter. Rules don't apply. If it's the Chiefs on Christmas, hey, there's a buck to be made. There are eyeballs to get. And I don't even have a problem with games on Christmas. Put games on Christmas. Put your project, product out there. That's great. But, like, how about not killing the players in the pro- process? Is that okay? Can we, can we structure the previous, you know, two weeks, at least one week, something like that, to afford adequate rest? I, I do not understand that. I think there's some interesting nuance to the schedule, you know, starting off with Atlanta and Denver, some reunion games that should be fun. Um, the lack of division games is really strange to me. None of those until November 17th, Steelers play the Ravens. Um, six of the last eight come against the division. I look at their schedule and I see, well, it, they should be able to ramp it up pretty decently. Um, a lot of their non-conference games, at least early on, I think should be winnable. I'll get to my record prediction here in a second. Um, but it's just so weird around Christmas and what's going to happen the second half of their season once they get into division play. In the second half, there are two short weeks, both after Baltimore games. Though that that's a little bit more, you know, we're, we're crying about Steelers specific stuff. Three games, three NFL games in 10 days. I feel like that's going to bother any team in the country. That's that's just craziness. But so I went through, I, I, I'm going to give them wins for Atlanta, Denver, the Chargers, Colts, Raiders, Jets, Giants, and, and uh, Commanders. We'll go losses with Cowboys, Eagles, Chiefs. That's largely chalk. And we say they split their division. That's 11 and six. That's about what I'd think. I think there will be some changes there, but I think those are those are beatable teams, and I don't know if I see any path forward with them beating Dallas, Philadelphia, and Kansas City. But, hey, we have like, what, four months until the season starts. I, I don't totally understand the schedule release hoopla, but it's fun nonetheless. It was a nice second topic in this thing. My main points are the Pirates, though. I'm, I'm just amazed that nothing has been done, nothing more has been done to this point. More players, uh, DFAing anybody, coaching staff, changing philosophy, whatever. We'll see what happens. I fly to Chicago today, going to get some uh, Jared Jones and Paul Skeens action. So make sure you like and subscribe. Uh, that is it for me here. Be back same time, same place tomorrow. And uh, yeah, thanks for checking us out. Thank you for checking out this content from Post Gazette Sports. If you watch this video on YouTube, please like the video and subscribe to our channel. For all of the sports coverage the Post Gazette has to offer, visit post-gazette.com.